Hey friend, I'm Robin May and a few of the professional hats that I wear includes being a transformational speaker, a life coach, and a licensed therapist. And personally, well, I'm a wife, a mommy to three girls, and a pastor's wife, just to name a few. Girl, I'm over here doing all the things while trying to stay in shape and keep my skin clear. But the truth is, I don't want to be known for being busy. I think that's a scheme that somebody set up. No, I want to be known for living a life that is in perfect alignment with what God intended. And I want to help you do the same. So it's with that in mind, I'd like to welcome you right here to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Over here, we're creating a safe space to have real conversations with real women on real topics. This is a judgment-free zone where we can be vulnerable and honest and curious about our lives so that we can elevate not just what we do, but who we are. So if any of that resonates with you, again, welcome to our safe space. This is Intentional Conversations with Robin May and Friends. Well, hello and welcome back to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and Friends. Y'all, I already know last episode was supposed to be our final episode in the Friendship Therapy series, baby. But when I tell you this series has been a hot one. Honey, this has been a hot one. Y'all have been emailing me, responding to me. I got my friends texting me. If you are new here, welcome to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and Friends. Here on this podcast, we try to focus on series. We do a series, a topic, and we lean into that topic for several weeks. Every once in a while, we'll have a one-off or we'll have an interview of someone or we'll have topics that change from week to week, but we are trying to focus on series so that we can dive a little bit deeper. Well, currently we are on the Friendship Therapy Series and baby, like I said, it has been piping hot. But you know, it speaks to what I said during episode 13, which started the Friendship Therapy series and that is friendship is critical particularly to women you know research says that women really desire close connected platonic relationships and clearly because you guys have really been into this series and it's been so much fun for me it has been eye-opening i've learned a lot i've reminisced about a lot i have looked at myself a lot throughout this series. And so I've enjoyed bringing this to you. Listen, I thought we were done last week with the series, but I had a great idea. Well, I think it was great. I had an idea to open up for Q&A and I have some questions here for you all to ask me some questions you may have about this conversation about friendship. And so I have several questions here. And let me tell you, I am going to handle normally, let me back up. Everybody slow down. Everybody take a deep breath. Everybody breathe. Clearly, I'm excited. Okay. Normally, when it's just me on the power, even when I have a guest, I take a lot of time to um, write notes and really flesh out my ideas or flesh out my questions. But for this episode, I actually um, pull the questions. I have the questions here and I am going to treat this podcast episode as if it was a live. So on lives, I just speak, I just share, I just talk. I'll have notes every once in a while, but I just talk from my heart. Um, And so I'm going to answer these questions as if I was at a, on a live or if I was at a speaking engagement, when I have speaking engagements and we open up the floor for Q and A, I just answer the questions because I don't know what they're going to be. So I just answer them from my heart. And so that's what I'm going to do today. So I have these questions in front of me and we may not be here long. We may not be here long, y'all, but let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 11 questions. Okay. So are y'all ready to dive in? Are you ready to dive in? I need you to pretend I can hear you and I want you to say, yes, girl, I'm ready to dive (laughs) in. Okay. And these are some really, really good questions. Oh, Some of you may be saying, Robin, where did these questions come from? So I did almost like an SOS. It's not an SOS because, you know, I used to look up. I don't remember what it said. It's something about the army, though. I used to look up what does SOS mean? But I sent out a 911 or SOS. I just sent an email out to my database and I posted it 
on Instagram, asking you all to send in your questions. And so these are where the questions came in. I had at least 11. I had more than that, but I had to cipher through some of them because some of them were repetitive. And so I have 11 questions here. So y'all ready? Listen, if this is your first time coming again, I want you to know that you are welcome here. I'm asking all of you to please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, will you please subscribe? And it really helps if you share the episode, if you comment, or if you just hit the heart button, if you're watching on YouTube or react somehow, if you're watching it on your favorite podcast app. Okay, let's dive in. So again, we have been talking about friendship therapy. We have talked about um, the importance of friendship. I talked about the ways I have disappointed friends that I am aware of. We talked about conflict in friendship. We talked about navigating safe spaces. And before we end, I'm going to share with you the definition of a safe space and what that means. And then we ended what I thought was going to be ending it with 10 tips to help you upgrade your friendship. So today I am going to answer these questions that I have gotten. Okay. Here is question number one. I'm rolling up my sleeves for those of you who are listening on your favorite podcast app, baby. I'm rolling up my sleeves because we are about to get into this. Okay. Here's question number one. It says, Robin, you said in one of the episodes, I believe the one with your sister, that your opinion about going to friendship therapy had changed. What was it before and how did it change? <laughs> you know, what's so funny? My, one of my girlfriends said, Robert, you tickle yourself. I do. I just sit around and laugh <laughs> because that question tickles me because for those of you who might be tuning in for the first time, this is your first time tuning in. I want you to make sure you go back and you listen to all of the, um, all of the episodes, but particularly this series. And just to catch you up, the name of this series is Friendship Therapy because I truly know and understand that a lot of times when you're navigating adult female friendship, there can always be something in it, some type of maybe tension or frustration or drama. It's sometimes something gets in it, something <laughs> gets in it um, in, the, in between you and your friends. And so sometimes you need a little bit of friendship therapy. But while talking with my only biological sister on episodes 14 and 15, we talked about whether or not we would actually go to friendship therapy. Like, would we be willing to see a therapist with a friend to navigate the relationship? And so this person is saying, Robin, you said that your mind had changed about friendship therapy. What was it and how did it change? Okay. First of all, let me say this. I talk through challenges with friends all the time. What I mean is if I'm having a challenge with friend A, more than likely 90% of the time, I'm going to talk through that challenge with my sister 90% of the time. Sometimes I might talk it through with another friend. Um, I try to make sure that if I talk about a challenge with a friend, with another friend, that is a friend that I know is mature and that's not messy and that is not just trying to start something. I really try to be careful about that because y'all know how it is. You can say, girl, I need to talk to you about such and such. And it's just really being messy. And I ain't saying I ain't never done that. Okay, come on. Come on now. Because over here we keep it real. <laughs> I ain't saying I ain't never done that. What I'm saying is that if I'm really having a conflict with a friend, I really try, I really try to talk it over with someone. Now, let me tell you this. One of the things that's important to me is that I just don't talk about values, but that I live out my values. And accountability is very important to me. And I also know that I only have my perspective and my perspective can be limited. And it's important to me to process things and talk things through. So it's very rare that I'm going to, it's very rare that I'm going to come to a conclusion about anything without seeking wise counsel on it. I can't even think about, think of anything right now that I've made a decision about or come to a conclusion about that I don't talk it over with someone. I truly believe what the Bible says, that there is wisdom in, multi in a multitude of counsel. 
I'm just very particular about who's in my multitude. I'm sharing that with you to set up this idea of how my mind changed about friendship therapy. So I want you to be clear that I definitely believe it's important to talk out what your frustrations are. And I know some people would say, you should talk out what your frustrations are with that person. I don't know that that's always the initial place to go. And hopefully I'll get back to that in a minute. I don't think always that you have to go to that person. Um, uh, should I go ahead and go here now? Okay, let me tell you why I say that. Because I think often we are so quick to go to somebody to confront them or to tell them what our problem is or what our issue is. And I believe often your issue is just that, boo, is your issue. And many times we're so busy confronting everybody else and bringing the issue to somebody else that really you got to do your work first. So I take that seriously. I do my work first. Now, I have found that um, there have been times or, or part of my strength sabotage. I talk about that in my course, the life course. You can check out that at youcanlivelife.com. But I talk about the strength sabotage. And what that is, is whatever your strength is, when overused can begin to sabotage you. Well, I consider it a strength that I am wise enough to know that I need to talk through what I am feeling and thinking to make sure it's not my stuff. But that also can be my strength sabotage because sometimes I can gaslight myself and I can think it's me when now, baby, this ain't you. And that's why I believe in wise counsel. Okay. Also, almost just about every woman that I work with in counseling and the majority, 80%, hmm, the percentage doesn't matter, but let's say 75% of my caseload are women. And then another percentage is couple. And then I do work with some men one-on-one. -on -one. But just about every woman that I work with, friendship comes up. I can't even think right now of a client, even if they're coming to me about something with their child or they're coming to me because of their marriage. Or the, at some point, the dynamic of their personal platonic female friendships come into play. And so I think it is important, even in therapy, that you talk about it. However, <laughs> what this person is talking about when it came to whether or not I would go to friendship therapy, what I said in the podcast, what I said in the episode was that originally my thought was, I wish I would. I wish I would use my insurance or pay out of pocket to go talk to somebody, go talk to a therapist with a friend about our friendship. But I said, no, but the more I thought about it, and I talked it over with some people because I told y'all I see wise counsel. I talked it over with some people. I kind of began to massage my thoughts about that because number one, I realized that my statement was based on the fact of the season of life that I'm in. And I believe that because of the season of life that I'm in, and some of you are in as well, you have to prioritize your time, your resources, your, um, your, your um, emotional capacity, you have to prioritize it. And right now, if I am going to sit across from a couch with someone, it's going to be about my life and what I'm dealing with, or it's going to be me and my husband, or it's going to be me and my children, or it's going to be my husband, my children, and all of us just when I am prioritizing in this season of my life, what's important. And so that's what I meant when I said it, it changed. Initially, my thought was there is no way on this green earth that I would go to friendship therapy, particularly because of the season of life I'm in. But I can understand if I was in a different season of life, and for me, I'd have to be much younger, how that could be necessary. I definitely could see it. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Let's go on to question number two. Question number two, it says this. This feels ridiculous to ask, but how do I handle feeling left out by my friends? Oh. It says, I feel like a middle school girl, but it really does bother me. Okay, all of these questions are gonna be kept anonymous, okay? So first of all, I wanna say, I don't want you to feel ridiculous, girl. First of all, let me just say this. All of us still have that little girl inside of us. Sometimes I tell my clients to put their hand on their heart and talk to the little girl that's inside of them. 
Y'all, sometimes I do it. If you ever see me out and you see me kind of put my hand on my heart, sometimes I am just soothing the little girl inside of me that's anxious or that's overwhelmed or that's scared or that's frustrated or that's mad, quite frankly. And so all of us still have that little girl inside of us who can still feel hurt and feel rejected. So I don't want you to feel ridiculous. Remember what I said at the beginning, friendship is important to most of us, a lot of us, and even for those of us that is not necessarily important, that important to us, it still matters, right? It may not be, for some people, it may not be a high value for them like it is for me, but they still want to have a connection and nobody likes feeling, um, I'm, I was about to say judged, people don't like to feel that either, but nobody wants to feel um, rejected. And so I would first say, don't feel ridiculous, girl. And then I would say this. Now, remember, y'all, unless you pay me a copay or you paying out of pocket and we have signed an informed consent, unless any of that has happened, this is not therapy for you. But I want to give you a little psycho education. And I want you to understand this. And I really want you to take this to heart. Remember this. Your feelings are not right. Your feelings are not wrong. Let me say that to you again. Your feelings are not right. Your feelings are not wrong. Your feelings are there to give you information. It's like opening a piece of paper, reading what the paper is saying. That's how I want you to respect your feelings. I don't want you to ignore them. I don't want you to stuff them. I don't want you to put them on the shelf. I don't want you to pretend they don't exist. I want you to acknowledge what you are feeling. And so if you're saying, girl, Robin, I feel, um, rejected. And you know what, as I'm preaching that whole thing, when you said in this, whoever wrote this question, you said, it feels ridiculous to ask. And I said, girl, I don't want you to feel ridiculous, but I don't also don't want to minimize that feeling either. I want you to understand that you have to pay attention to what you're feeling and figure out what you are thinking. Okay. So remember I said, it's not abnormal that if you feel rejected, that that doesn't feel comfortable. And I don't want you to ignore the feeling. But now this is where the work comes in. This is where the work really does come in. Now we have to begin to examine how you are getting to that feeling. And this is where the real work comes in in therapy or the real work comes in with your friends. You don't want to just assume that that feeling is rooted in truth. I don't want to just assume that because you feel rejected, your friends are rejecting you. Those are two different things. You can feel rejected because of how you're processing the experience. But what if you are processing the experience through a distortion? I know, girl, I know this. One of one of my girlfriends and I were talking about when you start being self-aware, honey, it can get exhausting. It really can get exhausting when you recognize how much work you have to do to be self-aware. That's why you ain't got time to judge nobody else, baby, because you got too much work to do. So I'm going to give that to you again. We are not going to negate that you feel rejected. I'm just suggesting that the feeling may not match what's actually happening. You could be processing what's happening through a distorted lens and it's landing you at rejection. So the first question I would ask, I would want to start understanding what is the nature of these friendships? How did you get connected with these folk? Is this um, five women that you're connected to and all five of them you feel like are rejecting you? Have they, maybe three of them go to church together and after church, you see them at the local brunch spot and you're like, why didn't they invite me? And you're assuming that they don't want you there. Those are the questions I want you to start exploring. Because again, your question was, this feels ridiculous to ask, but how do I handle feeling left out by my friends? I feel like a middle school girl, but it does bother me. I want you to really start observing the key word for our life has to be curiosity. I want you to be curious and observe when you feel that and what were the dynamics that occurred. Have you casually asked one of your friends like, girl, the next time y'all go to such and such, make sure you call me, honey, because I love it over there. Like, have you attempted to make sure that 
how you are landing that rejection is really rooted in truth. But the bottom line is, I don't want you to ignore the feeling. I just want you to process the feeling accurately. Girl, I hope that helped. If not, DM me. We'll talk about it a little bit more. Okay. We got to get through all these questions. This episode wasn't supposed to be long. Okay. In the 10 tips you gave, you said, let friendships be a mirror. Oh, this or this. In the 10 tips you gave, you said, let friendships be a mirror. But I don't really think my friends get me. So when they point things out, I feel like they misunderstood me and I don't agree. Wait, 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 let me read it again. In the 10 tips you gave, you said, let friendships be a mirror, but I don't really think my friends get me. So when they point things out, I feel like they misunderstood or understand me. And so I don't agree with that tip basically is what she is saying, that she doesn't agree with the tip that your friendships should be a mirror for you because she's saying her friends don't understand her. You know, I would answer that almost the same way I answered the previous question in that. First of all, life is a mirror. So remember what I said, I think in last episode, a principle is true, whether you understand or agree with the principle or not. A principle is true. Now, not opinions. Opinions are not necessarily true. It's just your opinion. But a principle is true whether you understand the principle or not. And it is a life principle that gravity is real. If I get up on top of this building and I jump off, whether I agree with gravity or not, that principle, whether I understand it or not, I'm going to fall down unless there's something else stopping me. And so the life principle that life is a mirror for you, that's a principle, right? And life includes our relationships. And so that tip is rooted in a life principle. However, I would also say to you to be curious. You said, my friends often misunderstand me. And that may be true, but that right there confirms the life principle. Because if you are telling me, which is what you are saying, I don't really think my friends, and you put an S on there, my friends get me. So when they point, when they point things out, I feel like they misunderstand me. That means it's more than one person. So that means this has become repetitive in your life. And that in and of itself is a mirror. The fact that more than one person in your life has misunderstood you, that in and of itself is a mirror. That lets me know without even knowing you, that there is something happening that you are not landing the way you intend to land. Remember this, we know our intentions, but we don't know how others are experiencing us. Let me say that again. We know our intentions, but we don't know how others are experiencing us. I was about to give you several examples of that in my life, but we'll be here all day because if I could give you several examples where I know my intention and come to find out people were not experiencing me the way I was intending for them to experience me. And so if that's the case, then I would encourage you to do some investigation on your journey. How often or when is the earliest time you have felt misunderstood? If you could trace back, when was the first time you remember feeling like these people just don't get me? That can begin to give you some information. Is it just platonic friends or, or would you say my coworkers don't understand me either, or my spouse doesn't understand me or mom and them didn't understand me either. Where else does that thread go across your life? Um, what I also would encourage you to do is to identify somebody that you trust, like somebody that you can be very vulnerable with and tell them what you're telling me in this question. Listen, Girl, sometimes I just feel like people don't get me. Is there a way I'm coming off or there's something that I do? Or is there a way that I'm showing up? But it has to be somebody that you trust that you're not going to be mad when they give you the answer. So again, the principle is true whether we understand the principle or not. Our friends absolutely can serve as a mirror for us. Now, in the episode, I said, be careful of LOL friends. Those are the friends who 
make snide comments or sly comments or they say things that can be a dig at you and they're constantly making digs at you but they'll put an lol behind <laughs> look at i'm just playing well after a while it's not funny okay and so you want to be careful about those lol friends but when you have friends in your life particularly if it shows up in different friend groups and you hear people like for example let me give us a, 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 a simple example if I'm going out with this group of friends over here and we're meeting for lunch and I get, we're supposed to meet at two and I get there at two 30 and they're like, Robin, we knew girl, we already knew we weren't going to be able to depend on you to get here on time. I'm okay. <laughs> then I go over here with these friends and we're supposed to get together a month later at four. It's a whole different group of friends. And I get there at four 45 and they say, girl, cause we knew Robin wasn't going to get here on time. Well, now I can start to see, wait a minute, this is what I'm giving off. The people in my life don't even expect me to be on time because this clearly is how I am showing up and I may not even realize it, right? Or I might realize it and think that it's funny or it's no big deal, but I'm starting to see people kind of annoyed about it. It's worth me paying attention to. That's a simple example, but it could be some real life examples or that is a real life example, quite frankly. <laughs> That is a real life example. I went to dinner with some of my girlfriends the other day and I was so mad. I was doing so, oh y'all, this is a perfect example. So I was telling my daughter, I was like, I gotta get, to, I gotta get there on time. I gotta get there on time. I'm leaving early. And my daughter, Ryan said, mommy, let's say we were supposed to be there at seven. I think I was supposed to get there at seven. She was like, mommy, you will pull in the parking lot at 630 and you'll be there. But somehow you still gonna get to the dinner place late. And that's my 16 year old daughter. So there is something that I am doing that is giving that, even if I don't agree with it, even if I don't, it's something that I am doing. And sure enough, sure enough, I got to the restaurant at 7.15 and I wasn't even the last one there, but I was so frustrated at myself because I wanted to be there on time but that's a simpler example it could be the way you're coming across it could be your temper it could be your passiveness it could be you call yourself being direct but everybody else is experiencing it as rude and maybe you say this is how me and my family talk well baby we we didn't we weren't raised in the kitchen with you baby so we're not hearing it that way so your friends absolutely can be a mirror for you Let's keep going, y'all. I'm spending too much time. Here is the next question. I really only have about one good, good friend. I don't really deal with a lot of people and that friend has plenty of other friends. It seems like I have a hard time connecting with people. Why did that make me sad? <laughs> Why did that make me sad? She says, I really only have about one good, good friend. I don't really deal with a lot of people. Okay, so let me say this. So you know, you can tell my values because friendship is a value for me because I automatically am saying, oh, that makes me sad. But homegirl may not be sad about it, except she said down here, it seems like I have a hard time connecting with people. Now, again, that doesn't mean she's sad about it, but clearly it's something because she didn't send the question and so or a statement because quite frankly, this is not even a question. But she says, I only really have one good good friend i don't deal with a lot of people okay so what i would ask about that oh y'all can see this microphone so good i'm sorry those of you who are listening on the podcast i have a microphone here that i'm trying to hide but clearly i didn't do a good job of it don't worry about it let's keep going <laughs> so what i would say to that is this I don't know if this is the case for you, sis, but sometimes, sometimes when you only have one really good friend, you could unintentionally put a lot of pressure on that one friendship. Now, hear me. I said not all the time. So do not DM me saying, Robin, me and my best friend only have each other and we are fine. Go on with your bad self. I'm saying sometimes particularly if this person has other friends, you could unintentionally put a lot of pressure on that friend. So if you are okay with just having one solid friend, I just want you to make sure that you even keep that friendship in perspective or do I mean in perspective, I think just keep that friendship um, healthy. 
and make sure that you are managing your expectations with that friendship because you don't want to put the pressure of all of your friendship needs on one person. There we go. You don't want to put all of the your friendship needs on that one person. Let's take it to marriage. I have been married 21 years. And as much as my husband is my everything, he's not my everything, right? He is the best thing since sliced bread, but he ain't the only bread in the loaf. Now, let's be clear. I'm not talking about no other men because y'all y'all tripping. I'm not talking about no other men. What I mean is I don't put all of who I am and all of my needs and all of everything on him that is unfair and we have the type of relationship if it's something i'm talking about my husband will say now baby i think that's a good one to talk over with kim my sister or you know what you need to call t about that one Nick will really what about the village you should call because he knows he's not really interested in whatever this topic is he'll say now your line sisters your line sisters would love this conversation because everything that is important to me and everything I want to break down to all the nuances he may not be interested in. So it'd be unfair for me to put all of the weight of who I am on one person. And that's what I want you to be careful about in the friendship. Also, I want all of us to understand when we talk about healthy friendship and having friends, it's not really about quantity. It's not about quantity. Let me say it again. It's not about quantity. It really is about quality. So if you have that one good friend and you're good with that and your relational needs are met with that and you're not putting a lot of weight on that friendship that's unrealistic, then girl, that's fine. This is not about quantity. This is about quality. And quite frankly, remember, I talked about this idea of tiers of friendship. We also have to remember stages of friendship. Remember, there are acquaintance. These are people that you're just like, hey, girl, how about them cowboys? <laughs> how about them falcons? This is just your acquaintance. Y'all cool. Y'all see each other every once in a while. Y'all might sit together at the uh, at your son's football game and y'all just acquaint. Hey, girl. Then it may be we are casual friends. We may go out. Um, we might see each other often at church and we uh, work on the same ministry together. So we may be casual friends. But then when you start getting to close and intimate friends, that's when you start sharing more personally. And quite frankly, that number should decrease because that number is getting closer and closer to you. We're not talking about quantity, girl. We're talking about quality. What do you do if your children are your best friends? I have two daughters that are grown. One is 25 and one is 30. When you said your sister is your person, that's how I feel about them. We do everything together. Is that okay? See, y'all trying to come for me. Y'all trying to come for me and y'all trying to get everybody else to come for me. Okay, you know we keep it real over here, right? Y'all are not going to like this answer. Are y'all ready to DM me? Y'all not going to like this. First of all, she said, is that okay? Honey, if it's working for you, Y'all know what I'm going to say. Repeat after me. Go on with your bad self. <laughs> no, and seriously, she said, and seriously, seriously, she said, is that okay? It was something about the, is that okay? That gave me pause because I don't want to present myself on this topic as the ruler of friendship. I will say that there is a difference between the friendship between a mother and a daughter and a friendship that's peer to peer. There is a difference. Again, there is a difference. Now, let me tell you this, just know it is my deepest prayer that when my daughters are, let's see if I can do it, 25, when my daughters are 27, let me see, when my daughters are 27, 25, and 20. When my daughters are 27, 25, and 20. Oh, it is my prayer that they consider me one of their best friends. It is my prayer that we hang out together. It's my prayer that we go to dinner together. And we go on vacation together and that we go to the movies together. But it is also my deepest prayer that they have peers of their age, that they have healthy relationships with that don't have to involve me. Because I believe that there is a developmental need for 
children to have a life separate from their parent or um yeah separate from their parent that their parent can be involved in their life but i do believe that a 27 year old girl or 27 year old 27 year old woman or a 27 year old man needs to have their peer relationships and i don't have to be engaged and involved in all aspects of that so again it's totally fine that you and your daughters are tight i pray can you stretch your hands toward me i'm gonna lift my hands i pray that i'm able to foster that type of relationship with my daughters but i will say that i have found in the work that i do that it is very important that mothers are able to establish peer relationships with other women and that our children are able to establish because there there should there should be conversations that you're able to have with your peers and there are some conversations that i might want to have about my husband that i'm not having with my children even if they are grown and so that's my thought on that i'm getting off of it because i don't want y'all mad at me here's the next question i really have some great friends but i often feel guilty because i just don't have time to hang out i'm trying to manage so much on my schedule that i barely have time with my family how do you handle this girl i think that's the prayer and the cry and the thing for so many women honey if if you can agree with that say amen i mean she can't hear you but just pretend she can i'm saying amen to you girl i can completely get it um i want you to unpack i feel guilty remember your feelings are not right your feelings are not wrong i want you to unpack feeling guilty i want you to think a little bit about why you feel guilty what is the story you're telling yourself about that because i'm telling you more people can relate to that than you may know I would encourage you to be um, creative about how you connect. Honey, let me tell y'all this. <laughs> Can I tell y'all a secret? How about, I believe in Marco Polo. Marco Polo is an app that I tell um, all my friends to download. I believe in it so much. Can y'all believe I have become an ambassador for Marco Polo? <laughs> it's just some ambassador program they have to, to push out Marco Polo. Honey, I have become an ambassador. I don't really know what it means. I got to read the paperwork again. It's not anything paid. It's just something to talk about Marco Polo. That's how much I love Marco Polo. I'm saying that is to find creative ways. When my girl Shaniqua was on here, she was telling y'all that most of the time she and I are connecting on Marco Polo when she's driving to work or I'm driving to the church or if I'm in my office at home or I'm in my office here and she is on her way to work, we talk on Marco Polo. I would encourage you to find creative ways to connect some of my girlfriends and i honey we have to put it on the schedule weeks sometimes months in advance we look on the schedule and we have to find it months in advance i want you to unpack why you feel guilty about it because that's important but then i want you to just find creative ways to connect now i will say this let me pause and say this i want to make sure that you are doing some soul care are you so busy that you are not self-caring and soul caring what do i mean i don't want you to be so busy that you're not finding time for things that are important to you because a part of my soul care is connecting with girlfriends and that doesn't have to be a part of your soul care but if you are wanting to connect with friends and you're not finding any time to do that that makes me wonder if you're not caring for yourself so i want you just to consider that Whew, let's see I was told that once you get married, you need married girlfriends and that you shouldn't spend time with single women. Is that true? Who told you that, girl? Who told you that? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I was told that once you get married, you need married girlfriends and that you shouldn't spend time with single women. I've heard that before, of course. Um, and, you know, sometimes that message can come from our mothers and that message can come from older women. And, and I guess I can be fair to say that your life does change when you get married and your priorities should change. Let me say it again. Your priorities should change when you get married, but I don't think it is a fast rule or a principle, quite frankly. Oh, you're single. You can't be my friend. Mm -mm. No, I don't agree with that. I believe how you navigate friendship and your standards of friendship and um, 
how you connect with friends is going to be impacted by marriage marriage now a lot of times that you were here can we just keep it real a lot of times that you were here was don't let them single women in your house but baby you need to be careful about whoever is in your house single women married women single men married men everybody need to be careful about who they allow in their space i think that was kind of the wisdom and let's just make it across the board we're going to be careful about everybody in our house okay Let's keep going. I am a widow and I'm in my 60s and I feel lonely a lot, but I don't like feeling like the charity case or the third wheel hanging out with the folks I used to spend a lot of time with when my husband was alive. And at this age, it feels silly to try and make new friends. But again, I do feel lonely. Honey, in Atlanta, Georgia, in DeKalb County, there is a, a senior citizen um, See, you know what? I am getting closer to uh, 60. Yes, I'm not even 50 yet, but still. And so it's hard for me to think about somebody being 60, being a senior citizen, but I think you are a senior citizen at 60. But anyway, they have um, uh, not senior citizen homes, but uh, community centers. Baby, in them seniors kick it. They have a good time. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with you finding new ways to connect with some new people. Even if you were 30, you don't want to always be the third wheel. Um, and so I understand not necessarily wanting to hang out with the couples all the time. So maybe when those couples are doing just the girls day out, you can go out with them then. But I would encourage you to connect with some people who are your age, who are still lively, who are still doing things, still out and about, because there is still more, so much life to live, honey. You're still young and I want you to enjoy yourself, but I can definitely understand how that feels three more and then we're gonna wrap up i have a friend that i really care about but she doesn't seem to pick up on social cues she can be a bit intrusive of, intrusive of my space or even sometimes she can be clingy to my other friends she really is a sweet girl but sometimes she can be a bit too much how do i set boundaries without hurting her feelings ah this is a hard one um because you will have to set boundaries and I think one of the ways you can begin to set boundaries is in advance, communicate what your expectation is. So for example, you said she can be a bit intrusive of my space or even seems to be clingy to my other friends. So let's say, I don't know what you mean by intrusive. I'm just going to come up with something. Let's just say, um, maybe she says, girl, I'm on my way over to your house. What are you doing? you may have to be very clear instead of saying um, um tiptoeing around you may be able to say oh right now is not a good time for you to come over i will call you and let you know in a couple of days or next week when we are able to connect like you may have to be very clear with her i would almost practice it because i understand i am the queen of not wanting to hurt people's feelings like literally the queen of it give me my crown but I think it's going to require you to be very clear with your boundaries um, and even being clear with your expectations when you connect with other friends. So it may be something like, girl, I know sometimes you may ask for one of the uh, girl's numbers. Um, you know how sometimes it'll be like, girl, give me your number. But I don't know. That's a hard one. You see, I just got tongue tied with that because I don't want you trying to manage that. Um, but you know what? That's it. That's it right there. You have to be careful about trying to manage things that are not for you to manage. Ask me how I know. So either if you know that when you have invited her into the space with your other friends, you are not comfortable with how she shows up, then that may mean you don't invite her into that space with your other friends. If you're not ready to have a tough conversation but there's nothing wrong with having a tough conversation and you can have tough conversations gently. Let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with having tough conversations. You can have tough conversations gently. You can probe and ask, um, ask her questions about how she's navigated other friendships. Ask her, has she ever had any challenges in other friendships? And she may begin to share and you could then point out what your experience has been, but don't give up on a girl. Don't give up on her. Here's your next, the next question. 
your story about being dumped by a friend really hit home for me. I was dumped by a friend and I really want to restore the friendship. Did you try to restore your friendship? How do I go about trying to repair my situation? So for those of you who may not have listened to that episode, I talked about how I had a really good friend and I looked up and talk about that first question where she says she feels rejected by her friend circle. I looked up and saw that this particular friend was having this event with all of our same friends and I wasn't invited. And even then, I don't think it dawned on me, but eventually I realized, oh, she's not my friend no more. She don't like me no more. (laughs) I'm laughing about it. I don't want to seem insensitive to it. Um, But it was just so many years ago, literally many, 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 like 15 years ago. So did I ever try to repair the friendship? I did not. Um, And I think it was because if I look back on it now, I just felt like I, if, if, if I was important to you, that may have been handled differently. Um, I talked about that in that episode. So anyway, what I would say is, no, I did not try to repair the friendship. Um, you said, how do I, you said, how do I go about trying to repair my situation? That's a tough one because it may not be repairable, but if you feel like you've done something wrong, if you feel like you have done damage to the friend, I want you to acknowledge that you can acknowledge that in an, uh, text. You can acknowledge that in a letter. You can acknowledge that in an email. You can acknowledge that over the phone. If the person will speak with you, you can ask to meet with the person in person. You can acknowledge your wrong. I just want you to acknowledge it without expectation. And that's difficult. You cannot acknowledge with an expectation that they are going to respond the way you want to. All you can do is take responsibility for you. So if you feel like you did the damage, it will do your heart a world of good to acknowledge it so that y'all can heal from it. If you can, if you can, if you can heal from it. Here's the last one. How do I deal with a friend whose relationship with her man? That's not funny. I'm sorry. How do you, why did I laugh with that? Why did I get tickled with that? How do I deal with a friend whose relationship with her man is so frustrating to me? I do not believe he is physically abusive to her, but I do believe that he is not good for her. It bothers me that she can't see it. Okay, let me read it again. How do I deal with a friend whose relationship with her man is so frustrating to me? I don't believe he is physically abusive to her, but I do believe that he is not good for her. It bothers me that she can't see it. Do y'all know how one of the things I said in the 10 tips is, girl, your friends have issues, but so do you. I would handle that very gently because you love your friend clearly. But many times we have to give those that we love the space to navigate their life in the way that they navigate their life. I know how hard it is because some of my girlfriends are probably looking at that, looking at this and like, or listening to this and they're like, really, Robin, really? I've told my girlfriends that sometimes it's when I'm watching them, particularly in relationships, and I can definitely see that the relationship is unhealthy. I tell them it's like me watching them walk into oncoming traffic. Like I tell them, you want me just to sit there and not say anything. And I'm watching you walk into oncoming traffic. So I think it's important to identify for me to know the type, the stage of friendship this is. If this is a very, very close friend, I think you have an obligation as a very close friend to let her know your concerns. But once you let her know her concerns, you got to give her the space to be a grown woman and navigate that the way she sees fit. If y'all are not particularly close and you do not believe she's in any danger, you have to allow her to open up to you the way she sees fit because you may be having some placement issues. We talked about that last episode. You may think you have a place in her life that you may not. And if she's not asking for you to come into that space of her life, you may be doing it outside of your space. But whatever it is, once you've said something, You cannot force someone to show up in a way that you would show up. So what I would encourage you to do is to, depending on the the type of relationship you all have, you may have to say that. You may have to say, now listen, girl, you know you're my girl. You know I love you and I got your back, but I am so protective of you. I'm going to have to tiptoe around the conversation with you and, let me make up a name. What's a, you and... I can't think of a boy name. I always say Sally with girls because I don't want to say somebody's name that I really know. Um, 
you and Fred. I'm going to make up Fred. I'm going to have to tiptoe around this conversation with you and Fred, honey, because I'm so protected. And then you set that boundary. When the conversation about Fred comes up, you're going to have to um, redirect the conversation because you don't want to be the person trying to dictate and control what happens with someone else because you wouldn't want somebody doing that to you. All right, y'all. I cannot believe this episode went so long. I did not expect for this to go so long. I hope you enjoyed this. And this really is the end of friendship therapy. And until next time, I will see you later. Make sure you share this podcast with your family and friends. Let them know to check me out, DM me and tell me your thoughts. And I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Listen, these conversations are to help you live intentionally, fully engaged, to help you elevate not just what you do, but who you are. And listen, I am committed to being in the trenches with you. If you haven't already, make sure you head on over to youcanlivelife.com slash academy. Yes, girl, the Academy doors are open. This is where you get to dive into further conversations on our podcast topics. We get to dive into the trenches of the life course, the course that I have created to help you create the life that you long for. And we get to have monthly office hours where you can ask me any questions you have about all of this girl life academy is where we can do life together so head on over to youcanlivelife.com slash academy